Late last year, Arts Council England uh, issued an invitation to tender for an international literature review on intrinsic cultural value, a phrase uh, that might not mean a lot to many people. It was a wonderful opportunity to take a deep dive into uh, scholarly research and uh, influential papers on the topic of, of how people uh, benefit from arts and cultural experiences. Uh, it was a topic that we've thought a lot about uh, and researched at Wolf Brown, but this really allowed us to delve much more deeply into the concepts of value and impact. Uh, in terms of uh, just methods, we, we uh, started, we were working with a colleague, uh, Diane Ragsale, who was helping us uh, source uh, literature just uh, through uh, academic uh, web searches and uh, bibliographies and reviewing uh, the kind of key academic journals. Um, and then we uh, also were able to circulate uh, calls for literature recommendations through Ithaca and through the uh, British Council. Uh, in order to try and uh, bring in a little bit more uh, international and non-English language uh, literature. And so that was helpful in just getting a, a kind of wide swath of, of uh, additional literature through that uh, means. The report uh, will be helpful to uh, not just researchers, but I also think artists and practitioners who really want to understand uh, in some detail how individuals are affected by an arts or cultural experience, the, the effect that it has on them emotionally, intellectually, aesthetically, socially. Uh, and, and the report provides a summary of many studies that have looked at impact and tries to collate the findings and really explain uh, and provide some deep insight into how people are affected by art, which after all is, is why we do what we do. Um, the report also dives into another area of, um, of learning, which is uh, the qualities of organizations that deliver excellent programs. So we look at um, everything from uh, intentionality, clarity of purpose, uh, openness to feedback, excellence in curating, uh, and many of the qualities. And, and we hope that the report provides a helpful framework, a helpful model, um, that uh, organizations and funders can use um, to advance their thinking about uh, what quality means at the institutional level. Several of the things I mentioned um, lead them, lend themselves to additional research. I think um, the uh, durational aspects, looking at uh, how um, the initial responses that people give uh, to, to a, a particular work or, or a program and how that compares to uh, their responses later on in life, uh, how, how they feel about the work looking back at it. I think that that's a, an interesting area of inquiry. Um, and the uh, relationship between the organizations and uh, their audiences. And on the one hand, you have the audiences uh, or the uh, opportunity to collect feedback from the audiences to help inform the organization's work, uh, which might help them uh, communicate and, and, and react to their audiences. Um, on the other hand, you have the, the opportunity to uh, look at the organization as a whole and, and kind of draw on the audience uh, uh, information as uh, kind of ad additional material in that uh, assessment. Doing this literature review was a little bit like uh, peeling an onion that keeps growing and it never ends and you peel back a layer only to find another layer uh, and so there's so much more research that is there that needs to be reviewed and there's so much more research to be done. Particularly in the area I would say of um, uh, quality assessment. How do we adjudicate quality? Uh, can audience members uh, be adjudicators of quality or should we rely on experts? Uh, there's also a great deal more research to do around impact, how people are able to report how they're affected, what questions are reasonable to ask individual audience members, uh, and particularly how to design questions that uh, an average person can understand and respond to. Uh, so there are many, many challenges for future research and we certainly identify many of them in the study.